This is Elliot Hassan. Welcome to another edition of Best Practices Weekly. Today we're going to be talking about a strategy for building your students' math reasoning skills, and they're called number talks. And this comes from an article in Teaching Children Mathematics, in which the author, a professor at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, talks about this idea of number talks as a quick way, an easily implementable way, to really have your students think about why math works the way it does, the way to use different strategies, the way to choose the most efficient strategy, really these deep, critical thinking reasoning skills. And here's how it works. A number talk is simply a 5 to 15 minute class discussion that centers around a very purposeful mental math problem. And so an example that the author gives of a fourth grade class might use the question 16 times 25. And that's the, the, for the 15 to 5 to 15 minutes, then you're discussing that question, 16 to 25. And, and I'm going to go over kind of the key components and then talk a little bit about what this might look like in practice. And so to be able to be successful, you need to have a class environment or a class community that's very conducive to having sorts of discussions, especially ones where students are likely going to be making some errors, and that needs to be okay. So they're very student-centered strategy. You're asking students to really try things out on their own. There are going to be some mistakes, and to make sure that you have a classroom community where that's really celebrated. And so the teacher can do that by taking all suggestions with sort of a blank face, not really showing like, oh, that's definitely wrong, or oh yeah, that's right, but really being very neutral, and also just modeling the behavior of really respecting the different sort of answers that students can come up with, whether or not they're way off. Second key component is the class discussion. And the way that this works is by giving students a minute or two to try to work out the problem on their own mentally. And if students finish early, encourage them to try to think about different ways to solve it. Uh, and so again, the qu question 16 times 25, you might give students a minute or two, have them do the little thumbs up symbol when they're ready, or whatever symbol you use in your classroom for when students are ready to move on. And then have a class discussion about it. So the teacher takes all the different possible answers that are out there. No right or wrong at this point, just taking all the different answers students have come up with, put them on the board, and then leads a class discussion about them. What are the merits of the different ideas? How did we come up with the different answers? Which one makes the most sense? And really by doing a lot of open-ended questions, you're leading the class into a discussion. And there might be opportunities for extending this at the end of the time into pairing students off to have them explore a particular strategy, to have them try to apply a strategy they used in the number talk on a different problem. Lots of ways you could sort of play around with this idea. Third, the teacher's role. It's very important that the teacher here is a facilitator is not really as much of direct instruction. You're not giving the answers, you're not giving the explanations. Very much facilitating, being very deliberate about the open-ended questions that you're asking that are gonna to lead to discussions. So this might be saying things like, oh, it's interesting that so-and-so tried to do it this way. Did anyone else try it a different way? Or how do you think that so-and-so came up with the idea to try this strategy? Have we used that before? And so by helping them draw connections, by helping them think about comparing and contrasting, really being just a good facilitator of open discussions. Then, the role of mental math. Why are we doing these as mental math problems instead of paper and pencil? Uh, the author talks about that we really want students to be thinking about a couple of things. We want them to be thinking about the efficiency of the strategies that they're using. We also really want them wrestling with having to Think about place value. Think about the math concepts as a whole instead of using algorithms, instead of using uh, sort of their different just rules that they've learned. We really want them to have to think about, if I'm faced with this question, just me and this, this problem, what do I do about it? And lastly, they need to be purposeful computation problems. So it's really important that you're not just throwing up a random multiplication problem, a random subtraction problem, a random addition problem. It's one that you've chosen very deliberately because of something that you're working on in your classroom. And so, for example, 16 times 25, you could use a lot of different strategies to try to solve that. You could use partial products by having them be 10 times 25 plus 6 times 25. You can break it down into different factors, so instead of 16 times 25, do 4 times 4 times 25. There's a rich number of ways you could solve this, but 16 times 25 isn't a great problem for uh, working on the strategy of rounding. So 19 times 3, for example, 
that might be a problem where students would be more practicing the strategy of, okay, I'm going to do 20 times 3 and then subtract 3 to figure out the answer there. And of course, these don't have to just be multiplication problems. So really, you have to make the problems work for what your goal is as a teacher. And so the basic idea here, again, is this is a short, easy structure that you're really helping students apply their math reasoning skills because they're having to wrestle with these problems, they're having to do it on their own, they're having to engage and explain their rationale, and the hope is that by doing this you're really going to start getting them away from this idea of just using rules, just doing math because that's the way it's done, but having them actually understand, here's my tool belt of strategies, Here I can, here's how I can choose which one is going to be the most efficient, which one's going to be the most accurate and which one applies in this particular math situation. So again, this is number talks, a 5 to 15 minutes, quick way to build your students' math reasoning skills. Thanks for watching and happy teaching!